All right, so question seven on the diagnostic. A, a lot of you did struggle with this, and that's because it's fractions, and fractions can be a little bit more challenging, and for whatever reason, they seem to be something that a lot of students forget over the summer. So the first thing that you have to remember with both adding and subtracting fractions is that you need to get a common denominator. And there's lots of different ways you can do that. Um, one of the simplest is to just multiply the two denominators. So 6 times 3 is 18, and that's going to give you a common denominator. Another thing that you can do is to look at the numbers 6 and 3, and think about what the smallest number is that they have in common. So what is the lowest common denominator? Um, and so in this case, that would actually be 6. Um, so that would mean that the first number, 5 over 6, would not change. Now one thing that you do have to remember is whatever you do to the bottom number, the denominator, you have to do to the top number, the numerator. So to get 6, I need to do 3 times 2. So that means I need to do the same to the top, and the top will become 4. This work here is optional. You don't have to show that work. You might just do that in your head, and that's okay. Now you are ready to subtract, and once you have the denominators the same, you just, 5 minus 4 is 1, and your denominator stays the same. Nothing happens to that. Think about it. If you have 5 sixths of a pizza, and you take away 4 sixths of a pizza, you're going to have 1 sixth of a pizza. The, the bottom isn't going to change. The size of the pieces is still going to be a sixth. So this one we're going to do the exact same thing for B, but in, in the case of B, um, we need to think about what's the smallest number that both 5 and 4 go into. And in this case, the smallest number that 5 and 4 go into is 20. So how do you get 20? Well, 5 times 4 is 20, so 2 times 4 is 8. And 4 times 5 is 20, so 1 times 5 is 5. Now that the denominators are the same, you can add the numerators and you can get your answer. The next two are going to be very similar. You still will need to get a common denominator, but they're mixed fractions. And I highly recommend that you change all mixed fractions into improper. It is far easier for you to work with improper fractions. To do that, you take the denominator, you multiply it by the large number, the whole number, and you add the numerator. So 2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7, and then the denominator stays the same. Likewise here, 3 times 7 is 21, plus 1 is 22. Then you can get yourself a common denominator. In this case, it's going to be 21. And so you ask yourself, how did I get 21? Well, 3 times 7 was 21, so 7 times 7 is 49. And 7 times 3 was 21, so 22 times 3 will be 66. And then you add. Now, um, you can leave your answer like that. It is perfectly acceptable to leave your answer as an improper fraction as long as it is simplified. If you prefer, you can write it as a mixed fraction, but it is not something that you have to do. So the second, or part D, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to change them to improper first. 5 times 2 is 10, 10 plus 1 is 11. 2 times 8 is 16, 16 plus 7 is 23. In this case, the lowest common denominator is 8, so that means the second fraction doesn't change. To get 8, we did 2 times 4, so we're going to do 11 times 4, and then we're going to subtract, and we're going to get 21 over 8. Again, you can leave your answer as 21 over 8, or you can change it into a mixed fraction. Both are perfectly acceptable as long as it is simplified. And then let's just look at this last one here. I'm just going to try to extend the page. There we go. Um, when you're multiplying fractions, you actually don't need a common denominator. The pieces don't need to be the same size to be able to multiply. When you add and subtract, the pieces need to be the same size. But when you're multiplying, they don't. You can get a common denominator, but it makes your numbers really, really large, and a lot of students don't like working with larger numbers. So the easiest way to multiply is to just multiply the numerators. 
So 5 times 6 is 30, and multiply the denominators. 8 times 20 is 160. And then don't forget to simplify. So 10 goes into both of those. 10 goes into 30 three times, and 10 goes into 160 16 times. There is something else you can do when you're multiplying um, that involves something called cancellation, and that we're going to spend a little bit more time in class talking about. So stay tuned if you're interested in that. And then division, um, the only thing you have to remember with division is when dividing fractions you multiply by the reciprocal. So 7 over 9 is going to stay the same, but then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of 2 thirds. And reciprocal means to just flip it. So the denominator becomes the numerator and the numerator becomes the denominator. Now it's just a multiplication question, so we just multiply the numerator. 7 times 3 is 21. And then we multiply the denominators, 9 times 2 is 18. And then, of course, we have to remember to simplify. That becomes 7 over 6. We can leave our answer like that. If you prefer, you can write it as a mixed fraction. Both are acceptable as long as it's simplified.